Alright, so this is my second attempt at recording this. But real quick, have any of you watched the Wang video here recently about Gamerleg? Because what I'm going to be talking about today and what I went through with my weird medical stuff is very similar and he actually brings up the condition as one of the possibilities of what it may have been whenever he was talking in the video. So that's fun, but before we get into that and into the main story of the video, let's talk about the art real quick. So for this video, the art in the background is for my March sticker club on Patreon. I really like how these turned out. The theme was tea, and I really love the idea of, of cute little chubbies with the giant teacups. So we have Kieran Arlo. This one is Arlo. I really do adore how cute he looks. Kind of pushing down the edge of the teacup and peeking over it. Now the tea for him was kind of a... I think it was chamomile blueberry was what I went with because I thought blueberry was something he would like. And chamomile because despite being very curious, he tends to have a bit of a calmer, more laid-back personality. He's very curious though, and that does lead to some shenanigans even though he's calmer. But I really think that like blueberry chamomile suits him. And I liked the shape of the cup. It's a bit more of a delicate shape than I went with for Kier. And I just found it a bit more suiting for him. And I think this just turned out so cute. If you're interested in getting the stickers, just take a look over at my Patreon. And with that, we will get into the story. Uh, real quick, I am still sick. So if it sounds like I'm sick, I'm still sick. But getting into the actual story with this, which in a way technically also re you know, refers to the fact that I got sick at one point. This started out a few years ago. Now this is something that I have recurring. It's much less common for it to be recurring, but to rip off the band-aid, the metaphorical band-aid real quick, um, oh, real quick trigger warnings for medical issues like lesions, vasculitis, blood vessels bursting under the skin, hives, stuff like that. If you don't deal well with detailed medical stuff, and there's really not a way for me to tell this without going into at least a bit of detail, this may not be the video for you. I have some more fun ones in, you know, on my channel, but I did want to give a, tri a quick trigger warning for that because I know some people, including myself, have some pretty decent medical triggers. So, but anyway, to rip off the metaphorical band-aid really quickly, I have something known as Hinox Shanlin Purpura. This is what, in his video, Wang referred to as HS Purpura. It is a form of vasculitis. My doctor, whenever he diagnosed it, also described it as a form of immune disorder. This is not too surprising. My sister, Andy, she has an immune disorder. It's not uncommon at all for blood siblings to both end up with immune disorders at one point or another if one develops one. The weird thing was that they developed within like a year of each other and they're very different. Hers has nothing to do with vasculitis. Mine is a form of vasculitis. So that's an interesting little tidbit there. But to start this out, this did not start out by me getting diagnosed quickly. And what happened initially was I had just, I had just been at the job that I'm at now for a short amount of time, just a few months. When this started, it had literally just been long enough for my health insurance to really kick in there. Although I think at the time, actually at the time I was still on, because of, you know, when certain laws went into effect and stuff like that, I was fortunate enough to still be on my mother's health insurance, thank goodness, because she had really good health insurance. Which is good, because this involved a lot of trips to the doctor. But it was very interesting, it was the tail end of September, and I started noticing these little dots on my legs, just these little pinprick red dots. The best way I can describe it, because, and now keep in mind, I have never had chicken pox, but the best way I can describe it is that it kind of looked like chicken pox, except there was no itching, no soreness, there was no irritation, nothing. And they were isolated from my knee down. Now I had a couple of theories at first as to what it might have been. My skin's very sensitive, where I work, we use a lot of bleach. I thought maybe some black, uh, some backsplash from the bleach spray maybe irritated my skin. 
Maybe. But it wasn't acting irritated. My next thought was razor burn. I had shaved my legs like a day before. My legs are very prone to razor burn. But again, it didn't burn. It didn't sting. It wasn't itchy. And that is not characteristic for me with razor burn. And then the next thing, and this is going to sound dumb, but my next theory, this is going to sound dumb, but if anybody has ever worked with those, um, you know the powdered drink packets that you can get at Walmart? Yeah, essentially Kool-Aid, but the Great Value brand and it's got artificial sweetener? We use those a lot. The powder from those gets in the air and can stain things for quite a while, too. We ended up with some counter stains that never went away at work. Like, they never went away until they literally removed the counters and changed everything when they redid the entire interior of the building. But red Kool-Aid was something that we made fairly often. It wasn't unusual if we made something like purple Kool-Aid, like grape Kool-Aid. I'd sneeze the next day or a couple days later and look at that, the tissue's purple, okay? So I thought maybe like some of the powder had gotten on my legs because I was wearing leggings that only came down to about the knee. And I thought maybe some of the powder had gotten on my legs, like just a couple little dots of it, gotten exposed to moisture, and maybe that was causing the red dots. But then it didn't go away for a good couple of weeks. So I started to get concerned. But the other, the weirdest part was I wasn't having any other symptoms. That was what really made it strange, was that I had little dots and nothing else. But I was starting to get worried and concerned and I didn't know what it was. And then some of the dots started turning into little bumps. Like, I thought maybe it was an ingrown hair. It was just maybe a weird coincidence that it was coinciding with where those little dots were. Again, especially because I had shaved my legs at one point. I'm very prone to ingrown hairs. And then they started getting sore. So I started getting concerned because this has been a couple of weeks. Nothing's changed. So we go to the doctor. Specifically, we go to the ER because there's only, like, certain urgent care places around here. I, I live in the middle of nowhere, so our options are very limited. You either go to the urgent care where, you yeah, they charge you out the nose, or you go to the ER. We went to the ER, especially because I was daggone concerned. Well, they looked at it. And they told me it was a staph infection. Gave me an antibiotic, sent me home. Well, as I took the antibiotic, and as time went on, more of them bumped up. And then I suddenly had this, a couple of purple splotches on my legs. And they came out of nowhere. Like, I had bumps and I had purple splotches. And they were weirdly tender, the splotches were. I do remember that. Now, a lot of the detail with this I have blocked out just because this was ultimately extremely traumatic. But along with the splotches, my legs also started to swell. Now, I have very, very skinny, like, ankles. The rest of me is not skinny. I have skinny ankles, like bony ankles. My ankles were suddenly swelling close to the size of my calf. Which was concerning because my, my feet and my ankles, they don't swell like that. So, because the symptoms were worsening, I went back to the doctor. Well, they told me the same thing again. They told me it was a staph infection, just keep taking your antibiotic, and they sent me home. And I don't remember if I got a cold or something, or maybe it had to, do, it had to have something to do with my immune system because of how immune disorders work. Because essentially with an immune disorder, your body's attacking itself. Your immune system is attacking, is attacking healthy cells too, as well as bad cells. That's what's going on when you have an immune disorder, really. Something's out of whack and causing your body to attack itself. But here I was, taking the antibiotic, and it was like a sudden increase. It went from some dots, some bumps, and purple splotches to suddenly I had a bunch of hives that just busted open into lesions. 
Those purple splotches were suddenly big lesions and spots that were very painful. I had one on my right foot that opened up and then turned black. Turned completely black. My feet were so swollen that I had to go and get, like, these all-elastic, like, ballet slipper-type shoes that you can find out at Walmart for really cheap. Because those were the only shoes I could wear. My feet and ankles were so swollen I couldn't wear regular shoes. And this was as it was getting even colder. So it's getting to the point of about mid-October at this point. And again, we go back to the ER. Again, they tell me it's a staph infection. They give me another antibiotic and send me home. And at this point, I'm like, no, it's not. Because if it was, something would be working or getting better by now. And it wasn't. So I got a hold of my mom, which at the time... I had already sent a few pictures to my mom and my aunt. You know, my aunt is a nurse. My mom works in essentially medical field adjacent, at least enough where she'd be able to figure stuff out. And so the thing was, I don't have pictures now. I got rid of all of them because the pictures are very traumatic for me. Because this whole thing was extremely traumatic. So I don't have the pictures anymore. But if you want to know what it looked like, I, I'll put I'll put it down in the description, a mention of it. But like, look up Henoch Shonlin Purpura if you really want to see what it looks like and you don't think you're going to be triggered by the visuals. And that's what was going on with my legs. So... I got a hold of my mom and she suggested I set up an appointment with the dermatologist since nothing was working and it was, you know, dealing a lot with my skin and stuff. Thank goodness she suggested that. I am so glad she suggested that. It took, I think, at least like a week. It was getting like mid to late October by the time I finally actually saw the dermatologist. And keep in mind, this has all been just in the course of less than a month that this has all happened. But we go, I'm in pain because obviously I've got open wounds on my legs that I'm trying to keep covered, but I don't know what to do. And we go and we sit in the waiting room at the dermatologist. He calls me back and he comes in, you know, after they take my vitals and all that, like they do, even at a special, uh, if you're not a specialist, they'll take your vitals. He came in, he took one look at my legs. He said, hold on a minute. He left the room and he was only out of there for a few minutes before he came back with a medical textbook. Immediately, he was able to open it to directly what I had. Now, when he told me that what I had was called Henoch Shonlin Purpura, I looked at him and I was just like, I've got a what in my what? Because I had never heard of such a thing. Nobody that I knew had heard of such a thing. And it was... It was interesting because... Apparently... I don't fit the usual demographic for it. At least I didn't upon, you know... Developing it. Because it most commonly develops... From what he told me... In young boys... Like, it's most commonly going to show up in young boys, ages like 2 to 10. It's not always reoccurring. I have it reoccurring, but he also told me I was one of the most severe cases of it that he'd seen. But he was able to tell me what it was, finally, which was enough of a relief. Thank goodness. Unfortunately, they had to run blood tests, which was awful. And now... Ever since I developed it, I used to be an easy stick when it comes to running blood work. I used to be a very easy stick despite my fear of needles. Now I'm a hard stick every time. And I did I did ask the dermatologist about this at one point and he said that that is essentially a side effect of it because it involves the veins, especially in the limbs. But thankfully, we had it un- we had it figured out so we could start actually working on it. Now, the downside of figuring out what it was, was that the treatment was high dosage of steroids, specifically prednisone. 
And the bad thing about that is that it's left me with something that I'm still struggling with now because I have hormonal issues that cause me to struggle losing weight even while exercising. And I ended up, because a steroid, if you're on a, like a medical steroid for a while, it can make you gain quite a bit of weight. And it did me. It did me. I ended up gaining quite a bit of weight. I'm still struggling to lose it. Like, I'm, I keep myself fairly healthy, but I'm still struggling to lose that weight. But then on top of that, my legs had to be bandaged. My legs had to be very tightly bandaged, too, and I had to change them, change the dressings on them, the non-adhesive medical pads that would go over the wounds. And the worst part, I think, was that ultimately, I found out that the one spot that turned black, thank God I went to the dermatologist when I did, if I had left it any longer, it could have easily ended up essentially necrotic, and I could have ultimately lost my foot. It could have ended up with a bit becoming gangrenous and losing my foot if I hadn't been careful. And along with that, I had a very large lesion on my left ankle. And ultimately, this left me with a bit of nerve damage. Because it went, it was not a surface wound. It went almost down completely to the bone. And as I said, I had to have my band and my legs bandaged for months. This was miserable because the swelling and the pain and HSP attacks your joints as well as if it progresses too bad. And this is one reason why it was so adam and so important that we get it under control was that if left unchecked, it can attack the kidneys directly. The kidneys and the joints are two of the biggest things it can attack. And it did attack my ankle. That combined with the actual lesion left me with quite a bit of nerve damage. And that's not even the worst part. Like I said, I had my legs bandaged because I had all of these open wounds. And inevitably, just from like bathing and runoff water and stuff like that, I got an infection in that, in that wound on my ankle especially, but even on the other ones around that foot. Because a lot of the, the biggest wounds and a lot of the scarring, because I do have a lot of scarring and scar tissue now around there, was concentrated around my feet, my left feet especially, my left foot. I only have one left foot. My left foot especially. And let me just say, if you ever have an infection in a wound and they have to swab it, I feel for you because it's very painful. Infection in a wound is an extremely painful thing anyway, which even without the, even without the infection, my legs were just throbbing and in constant aching pain, which was awful. I would, I would take like ibuprofen or Tylenol and it wouldn't even touch it, but <laughs> getting a wound swabbed. Now, if any of you have seen my teeth series, you know that on more than one occasion, I have had teeth removed that were so abscessed that they would not numb, but had to come out anyway. So I've had teeth removed when they wouldn't numb. The numbing did nothing. I can genuinely say I would rather willingly sit through that again than have another infected wound swabbed. Give me the tooth removal any day over that because that was absolutely awful. I don't think I've ever really hollered in pain. I don't think I've ever really hollered in pain the way I did from that. And it was horrible. And then on top of that, like I said, I had to I had to have my legs bandaged. When I changed things, I had to actually put antibiotic cream and like steroid cream on the wounds to get them to to get them to do what they needed to do to get past all of this. And thank God 
that we finally got it under control, both for, you know, my sanity, my health, and also my wallet, because going to a specialist literally weekly because they needed to keep an eye on it was a little expensive after a bit, especially when you get paid every other week. So what, what we ended up doing was I had to be on that for that long, but I also ended up being a bit of a spectacle at the doctor's office because I was, I did not fit the usual demographic. I was a bit of an oddity. So even though I had one specific doctor that I went there to see, I saw every single nurse and doctor in that building. Because I was just that odd. There would be other nurses and other doctors kind of poke their head in after they knocked and be like, is this the HSP case? And because, you know, one of my nicknames, because of my actual name, one of my nicknames is Case. So I just, I turned it into a joke because that's how I cope with things. I'm like, yeah, this is the HSP case. But it was, it was also frustrating and a little bit embarrassing being a bit of a, a spectacle but I do understand it too. And it actually goes into a little bit of why I wanted to share this, even though this wasn't as funny and goofy as my usual, as my usual stories and stuff. And I know it's not as funny and goofy and all that. I haven't made as many jokes because this was honestly something that was very traumatic for me. And I didn't find out how traumatic until afterwards Um, As I said, I have it recurring. When I get sick or too stressed, I can start getting little dots. Now, at the time when that happened, I only had them on my legs when the big flare-up happened. I had one or two on my arms, but nothing actually major. Now, whenever I get sick or too stressed... On my hands and and my arms, I'll get a few little red dots that sometimes start to bump up, but usually I get them back wrangled before they can go bad. But what really told me just how traumatizing the whole thing was for me was when I developed one little dot on my foot. I was wearing sandals, I looked down, and I noticed just a little dot on my toes. Now, before this, I was at work at the time. I was just, you know, goofing off with my coworker, chit chatting, laughing, all that. I went from fine to a full blown panic attack in the blink of an eye because the whole thing was that traumatic. And I I just want to say, if anybody else has chronic illness or struggles with anything like this, I really feel for you. And if you're not the kind of person who feels like sharing that kind of thing, I don't blame you. A lot of people don't. The main reason I like to share is because, for one thing, I'm comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with it. I don't mind sharing. It explains, like, a bit about me and who I am and why. And why certain things really set me off. Like, I don't like the feeling of anything too constricting on my legs because my legs were bandaged for, like, from October through January. And it just... Because of that, I don't like things like that. And I don't mind to share those things. I know not everybody likes to share. It's like on the on the Wang video, I actually commented and somebody was like, You know, CIA could waterboard me and I wouldn't admit this stuff, but here you are writing a novel about it. And I know that was supposed to be, like, something of, like, why don't you keep this to yourself? But there's a reason I don't. There's a reason I don't. And it's that, for one thing, I'm comfortable sharing. As I said. But I'm also, I also think that covering things like this is important for people who are comfortable sharing and have gone through it. Because if I had even had an inkling of the condition before I, before I went through it, I might have gotten it figured out sooner, and I might not have had to have been on a high dosage steroid for three months. I might not have ended up with it getting so bad that I had a severe infection in my leg or ended up with severe nerve damage in my ankle. Things might have gone different if I had known. There's no changing that now. Obviously, there's no going back and undoing it. 
But that's why I find it important to share things like that. And like I said, I know this wasn't one of my more jokey and goofy, silly ones. But I really appreciate you guys for listening. I do hope you enjoyed the story. If you've gone through anything similar, I hope that you haven't. Just because I know how bad it can be. But if you have, I hope that you related to it and it, you know, let you know that you're not alone. And I thank you guys so much for watching. I also thank you guys so much for the fact that we are almost at 800 subscribers. Like, last I checked, we were like 11 away. And I'm floored by that. I am stunned. And I just want to thank you guys so much because I never thought that this would happen. And I appreciate every single one of you who watches. And I love you guys so much. You guys are awesome. And just thank you greatly for your support and for watching. And also thank you to my wonderful patrons. Inside Chaos, Salmon, and Creativa Artly. I'm getting to where I really enjoy saying your name. I like it. It's fun. And I just want to thank you guys so much for your support and for watching. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!